Hi, I'm Dr. Katie, the Senior Centered Physical Therapist, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are gonna be addressing frozen shoulder. In this workout, I'm gonna show you the exercises that I recommend for helping increase range of motion and some strength in that shoulder joint. However, I'm only gonna show you how to do the exercise. I would recommend doing at least three sets of 10 or three sets of however many reps you can do today making sure you rest for about 30 seconds in between each set. Also, please make sure to check out my blog, theseniorcenteredpt.com, in order to gain more information about frozen shoulder and a variety of other conditions that physical therapy can help treat. As always, please give this video a thumbs up. Remember to hit the subscribe button because that really helps people to find my channel so that I can continue to grow the Senior Centered PT. For this workout, we're gonna need a few tools. You'll need at least one towel roll. You'll also need a resistance band, a stable surface that you can lie on, as well as a stable surface that you can lean on. You'll also need either a golf club or a cane or a PVC pipe, something that can help you with your active assist range of motion that's not gonna bend or break. So go ahead and grab your supplies. First, we're gonna look at all the muscles that we are working in this exercise video. So let's start there. To start, we're gonna do those pendulums. So we're gonna put some traction on the capsule and allow for some movement. And we're also gonna focus on the muscles of the rotator cuff. So that's the supraspinatus, as well as infraspinatus, and then teres minor. And then underneath the scapula, we have a muscle called subscapularis. Those same muscles are gonna be worked in our assisted range of motion as well as stretching of the capsule. For the wall washes, we are going to be using upper trap, middle trap, as well as that teres minor again. Then for our internal rotation stretch, we're mostly gonna be stretching that infraspinatus and a little bit of that teres minor. Then we're gonna do lunges. So we're gonna work the back of the legs here. So we're gonna work glutes, we're gonna work hamstrings, as well as working the front of the leg. So working our quad muscles, so the four muscles in the front of the leg. Lastly, we're gonna do some resisted internal and external rotation. So for resisted internal rotation, we're gonna work that subscapularis muscle. For resisted external rotation, we're gonna work infraspinatus, supraspinatus, and teres minor. That's all the muscles we're gonna be working in this workout. Let's get started. When it comes to frozen shoulder, making sure we have range of motion and having more movement in the joint is really the name of the game. So we're gonna start with pendulums. For pendulums, you need a higher surface, so a countertop, a high table like this, something that you can rest your weight on on your non-injured side. So I'm gonna stand, so I'm right next to my table here, and I'm gonna hinge forward at my hip and place my non-injured arm on the table. Then I'm gonna take a split stance here. So I have some space for my injured arm to hang or for my frozen shoulder arm to hang. And then I'm gonna rock back and forth using my legs. So my arm is just going along for the ride. And why is that? So when we have frozen shoulder, like I said, our goal is to get that motion. So we're allowing for gravity to provide some traction, some pull down from the shoulder joint to give us a little bit of space. But we're moving from the legs because our legs actually are responsible for 50% of the power that comes at our shoulder joint. So if you think about golfers or baseball players, they don't just move at their shoulder, they actually are moving at their legs, at their hips, shifting their weight in order to get some power in that joint, in that shoulder joint. So we shift back and forth. Just allow that arm to be heavy. And then we can also move our feet apart and then we can rock side to side. Once again, just shifting our weight and allowing the arm to go along for the ride. Noticing too that I'm keeping my back nice and flat. I'm not arched. I'm not sticking my booty out. I'm having a nice neutral spine, allowing for this table to support me as I go side to side. And we stand it back up. 
Next, we're gonna look at how to stretch the shoulder using a cane, or I'm gonna use a golf club even, but if you have a broom or a PVC pipe, something that's long that you can help to guide your hand and your shoulder motion, go ahead and grab that. We are gonna be doing that active assist range of motion. So I have a golf club with me. Like I said, you can use a PVC pipe or a clean broom, something that's gonna allow for you to press against without really bending. So we want it to be nice and strong. Also for our external rotation, we'll want a towel roll underneath our arm. So if you wanna grab that now, go ahead and do so. I'm just gonna lay down here. So I'm gonna take my golf club and put it out of the way. And then I'm gonna roll down to my side and lay to my back. Get my towel out of the way for the time being as well. And then just finding that rested position on the table, just allow yourself to relax for a moment. When we're doing this active assist range of motion, the idea is that the injured arm is going along for the ride, just like with pendulums. So I'm actually gonna use the power from my non-injured arm to move my shoulder. I'm gonna take my frozen shoulder arm and I'm gonna wrap my hand around the golf club so that my thumb points towards the ceiling. That way, when my non-injured hand lifts my shoulder up, the thumb points up overhead. And then my non-injured hand is gonna guide back down. If that's too much range there, I can move my non-injured hand up and support it like that. So going nice and slow with control, making sure that arm that's experiencing that frozen shoulder is going along for the ride. Also, know that it might be that you just get to hear. It's okay, it doesn't have to go all the way overhead. So just getting to where your range is, if that's right there, hold it at the top of your range, take some deep breaths, and then slowly lower it back down. With frozen shoulder, we want the range of motion, but we don't wanna push into a really painful position because that can actually tighten things up even more, and we don't want that. Next, we're gonna do abduction. So that's going out to the side. So I'm gonna keep my thumb where it's at, and then I'm gonna press with my non-injured arm to bring out to the side, and then I'm gonna pull it back in. Once again, I can move my non-injured hand to wherever is comfortable to really provide that guidance. Feeling that stretch in the front and back even of the shoulder here. And then bring it back down and up. So we want that thumb kind of pointed towards our head as we come up and down. Remember you find that spot where you can get to no pain Maybe some discomfort, but we don't want strong pain. And then we're just gonna breathe. Just try to get that body to relax, allow for more mobility and bring it down. Next, we're gonna do external rotation. So we'll use that towel and we're just gonna kind of fold it up or roll it up. I'm gonna move my arm so it's a little bit at an angle, so it's like I'm making a V between my torso and my arm. Then I'm gonna grab my top of my golf club and my non-injured hand is just gonna press to kind of open that shoulder up and then it's gonna allow for it to come back in. Press, open that shoulder up and pull it back in. One more, we press, hold it out Breathe. Nice deep breaths, relaxing breaths, and then pull it back in. So with each of these motions, we're stretching different areas of that capsule that might be tight, and we're allowing for those major motions that we need in our shoulder for function. Next, we're gonna do some wall washes. So you can move away from your stable surface that you're lying on and grab a couple of hand towels. We're gonna wash our wall next, so I'm gonna turn and face the back wall. I'm gonna take my towel and place it against the wall kind of low so that my injured arm can start nice and low, and then we're just gonna slide it up that wall. 
hold at the top of your range, and then slide it back down. So this one can be a little bit frustrating at times because we want to be able to get all the way up here, and that's not always possible right out of the gate. So we want to make sure that we're taking our time working up to our range. My wall's not very slidey, so I have to hold <laughs> a little bit in order <laughs> to get the towel to move. And then I slide back down. And I slide it up to the top of my range, wherever that's at. And I hold for five, four, three, two, one, and bring it down slowly. Sometimes people even have to guide their arm back down with the opposite hand, that's okay. The next one we're gonna do is we're gonna bring that arm down out to the side, and we're gonna make like a snow angel. We're gonna come up just to as high as we can, and then down. Wall washes are a great one to track your progress, so you can notice from day to day the difference in height that you're able to achieve. And remember, if today you're just right here, there's no problem with that. We're working on getting that range of motion. With frozen shoulder, we're not pushing it too hard. We're just making sure we're not losing motion and gaining any motion that we can. Next, we're gonna do a stretch for our capsule. So we're gonna grab a strap or a towel if you have one. I really like using a stretch strap for this stretch because you can create a little loop for your hand. You can also use like a beach towel and that's fine too. You'll just have to hold the towel with your hand, so no problem. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this strap and place it over our non-injured shoulder and then we're gonna place the loop over our hand of our injured shoulder. So the back of my hand is facing my back or you can think of it as palm facing away from the back and my thumb is pointed up. So I'll turn so you can see me a little bit better. Once again, if you're using a towel, you just hold onto the towel. Don't have to death grip it, just hold. And then our non-injured hand is just going to gently pull up. This is stretching that posterior or that back capsule of the shoulder, and you will feel this. A lot of people find this one really, really uncomfortable into painful. So know that if this is where you're at today, or if just touching the towel is where you're at today, it might take some time to work up to, and that's all right. We're not trying to crank on the shoulder and make it angry. We're just trying to stretch, get some range. So wherever the top of your range is, just take those deep breaths, hold it for 30 seconds, and then you'll slowly help release it back down. And then you'll do it again, pulling it up. Find where that stretch is. Deep breaths, hold for 30 seconds, and then you'd release it back down. Next, we're gonna be doing some lunges. So if you need a chair or a stable surface to hold on to, go ahead and grab that now. If you're using a chair or stable surface, I would place my hand so it's next to you instead of in front of you, but I'm gonna to turn to the side so you can see the motion a little bit better. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna stand with feet underneath our hips, and then we're gonna take a long step back. Then we're gonna lower the legs. So bending the knees, notice that I'm not shifted forward, I'm not shifted back, I'm straight down. What tends to happen is people shift too far one direction, and then it's a lot of stress on the knees and we don't want that. So we hold in our lunge position, and then we're gonna rotate from the abs, from the ribs towards our front leg. So we rotate towards the leg and back, keeping the hips forward the whole time. So 50% of the power in the shoulder comes from the legs, another 30 comes from the abdominals. So we wanna make sure we're finding that strength, finding that power in these areas of our body not just relying on the shoulder. If your shoulder can't come up that high and you just need to be here or you need to let the arms rest, making sure we're rotating from the ribs can be helpful to keep the hands out in front and they act kind of as a guide for rotation. Back to center and stand. 
So I stayed in that position for a really long time, which can be really tough for the legs. So we're just gonna roll through it. So we're gonna lunge, rotate, come back to center, and stand. Lunge, rotate, center, and stand. One more. Lunge, rotate, center, and stand. And then come back to our starting position, and then we would switch sides. So opposite leg goes back, we lunge down, rotate, center, and stand. Down, rotate from the ribs. So what it looks like if I rotate from the hips is my knees come out of alignment. So making sure we're rotating, using those abdominal muscles to rotate us, using those obliques to bring us towards that front leg, back to center, and up. Down, rotate, center, and up. And then you bring it in and shake those legs a little bit. Lastly, we are gonna be doing our resisted internal and external rotation. So go ahead and grab a resistance band. For our resisted external rotation, we're gonna take our towel roll and place it underneath that upper arm. Then we're gonna take our band. We're gonna lay it over our palm. Then we're gonna wrap it around the back of the hand once. That's it. We don't wanna wrap a ton of times and cut off circulation, just one time. And then we can gently close that hand over that band. That way we have a nice strong hold on it. You can take this end of the band, tie a knot in it, put it in a doorway and close the door so you have something really strong to pull against. I'm just gonna be my own hold here and place this part of the band on my hip. With my shoulder that I'm rotating, I wanna think about my hand meeting the spot where the ceiling and the wall come together. So I'm coming up in addition to pulling away. So we can think about touching the belly button, pull away. Touch the belly button, pull away. If I need more resistance, I can choke up on that band a little bit, pull away. Pull away. If I need less resistance, I can let some of that band go and pull away. Keep in mind with frozen shoulder, we really wanna work that range of motion and then add the strength. So know where you're at in your ranges and always talk to your physical therapist before you move on to the strengthening exercises. Next, we're gonna do resisted internal rotation. So that's pulling in the opposite direction. So I've placed my band on the same side as my injured shoulder in a doorway. So I stand so that I'm perpendicular to it and I can wrap my band around my hand again, making sure I have that nice strong hold but I'm not cutting off circulation. And then we have that towel underneath the elbow and I pull in towards my belly button and then release. And as we release, we wanna make sure that band is not controlling us. So we're pulling in and then we're steadying as we release. We don't pull in and let go. So it's that eccentric work we're doing with the steadying, and that's what's really gonna get those internal rotators, that subscapularis, even stronger. And then let it relax. Congratulations, you completed this workout. Make sure you revisit it in order to continue to increase your range of motion and gain some strength and help decrease your pain and discomfort caused by frozen shoulder. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that it helps increase your range of motion and decrease some of that discomfort and lack of function that can come from frozen shoulder. Please remember to check out my blog, theseniorcenteredpt.com as well as to like this video, as well as subscribe to my channel to continue to get notifications about all of my future content. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, I'm Dr. Katie, the Senior Centered Physical Therapist. Have the strength to live life to the fullest. Bye-bye.